My name is Ava. I'm a travel vlogger and writer. This is the story of my journey in a country that is unique and filled with immense beauty. Pakistan, home to over 200 million people. Today, we embark on an ambitious journey. I want to see what Pakistan is really like. This journey will take us from the coastline in the south all the way to the roof of the world. That's the Chinese border right there. I want to meet the people of Pakistan and from them learn about the culture, history and religions, all of which have shaped the Pakistan of today. I'm going on an epic road trip along the legendary Karakoram Highway, one of the highest paved roads on earth and unofficially known as the eighth wonder of the world. This 1,300 km superhighway connects Islamabad to the world's highest border at Hundra Pass and finally Kashgar in Xinjiang, China. in this incredible spot right here look at this viewpoint and we're in between three of the most massive mountain ranges in the world so you've got the Karakoram range to the north just over there you've got the Himalaya to the east all across there and then the Hindu Kush right here southwest Imagine, this is the home of K2, Nanga Parbat, and countless other high peaks. The magnitude of it all is just baffling. It's so mind-blowing. No wonder people call this place the roof of the world. This majestic setting is the location for an extraordinary event. We're on our way to the wildest, highest holo festival in the world. Welcome to the ancestral home of polo, played on the highest polo ground in the world. I'm here in Shandur in northern Pakistan at an altitude of 3800 meters. 
The air is crisp and the atmosphere electric as the crowd begins to gather for the most awaited event of the year, the Shandor Polo Festival. This high altitude tournament brings together two teams from opposite sides of northern Pakistan who have traditionally competed against one another, the Gilgitis and the Chitralis. Whatever their differences may be, they both agree that the game of polo was originally invented right here in Central Asia over two millennia ago, and not in Britain, as many seem to believe. And it's here that polo is still played in its original rule-free form. They call it freestyle polo. The thing about freestyle polo is that it basically has no rules. There is no referee, pretty much nobody wears helmets. The only aim of the game is to get the ball across the goal. And that's what makes it beautiful, but that's also what makes it probably the roughest sport you'll ever see. To me, the most beautiful thing about the festival was the sense of pride and joy I got to see in people's eyes. To them, the rivalry between Gilgit and Chitral is real. Very real. After a win, these people sure know how to party. There's seemingly no end to the celebration. Bands come all the way out here to perform traditional music from Chitral and Gilgit Baltistan and dancers from the audience join in the music, expressing their joy at every single triumph. Then, some of the performances are a bit of a shock. This is a traditional sword dance native to these northern reaches of Pakistan. And yes, it does look pretty risky and dangerous to me too. Guys, this is such an honor. One of the captains of the Chitral teams actually allowed me to ride his horse. This is Okap. Now, let's see how this goes, but I'm just so excited to be riding at the Shandur Polo grounds. What an incredible experience! But we've got to keep on moving. We're back on the Karakoram Highway. This modern marvel is the major trading route between Pakistan and China, replacing the old rugged mountain tracks that were once navigated on horseback. We take a quick stop to check out what remains of the ancient Silk Road. This is the actual ancient silk route just over there and it looks like just a line on the face of that massive rock. It's really, it's, it's hard to imagine because I mean this, this was the route that actually used to connect trade between west and east. It was such an important cultural link too. But if you look up close it's, it's not much wider than perhaps a jeep track. 
I can't even imagine how treacherous and difficult it must have been to cross it. But the incredible thing is that you can still see it. On the way to the Chinese border, I made a stop in Karimabad. Nestled deep inside the magical Hunza Valley, Karimabad served as the ancient capital of Hunza, which used to be a princely state until the British Raj. Hunza is dotted with forts and outposts which were made to collect taxes from trade caravans traveling to and from China on the ancient Silk Route. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Karimabad and we are just about to explore Altid Fort, one of the most important cultural landmarks in this entire region. It used to be a very important stopover point for traders along the Silk Route. We're just about to meet Mr. Javed, who's been a guide here for 12 years, and he's going to tell us more about the history. Hi. Hello. Hello, sir. Ma'am. How are I you? I see how TikTok is. <laughs> how are you? Good. Good. Great. Shall we? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, you are most welcome to the oldest monument of Gilgit Baldistan. Altit Fort has built by Tibetan architects who came from Little Tibet. Uh, Altit Fort is 900 years old. Huns came here 400 BC. After Han, different tribes came from different places from Russia, Central Asia, Tibet into Aryans, Yogar. Hunza was the gateway of Silk Road. The historian and local inhabitants told us that this is a vertical tomb. 400 years ago, a prince revolted against his elder brother. Elder buried him alive here. So the younger brother who revolted yeah. is now buried in this yeah. tomb. Yeah. This is pretty brutal. Please take her, the doors are too short. This must be a very important room. Hi, uh, living room of king and queen. It was fireplace. King and queen both would sit here for breakfast, lunch and dinner, dead space for sleeping. They slept here? Yeah. And lived here and lived ate here. here? They had not separate kitchen, dining room, bedroom. Everything was in the same place. You can imagine this was luxury. Altered Fort towers over the ancient Silk Route and is said to be almost 900 years old, making it the region's oldest standing monument. Defying gravity, it sits on top of the mountain, overlooking the Hunza River. This was the place of death penalty. When the local warriors arrest invaders, take them here, throw them off. This is where people will be thrown off the roof as punishment? Yes. Wow! This does look very high. Yeah, so. How many meters is that? The 300 meters. A 300 meter, meter vertical drop. 990 feet. I mean, I, as much as I love this landscape, I wouldn't want to be one of the people falling down there. Incredible. Before coming to northern Pakistan, I kind of knew that I could find some amazing landscapes here. But one thing that I did not expect to see is Pakistan's first female-only carpentry workshop. Yep, correct. Only girls work here. Let's go and have a look. Twenty-eight-year-old Nazia has been working as a full-time carpenter, honing her skills for the past seven years. Yeah. 
Sinazi, how long have you been working here at Shikam? I joined in 2011 and started the carpentry. I worked in carpentry, I worked in furniture, I worked in furniture, I worked in beds, I worked in chairs, and I worked in tables. What was the training process like? This was very difficult. There were two male carpenters with us. They taught us and worked for us for us. Because of that, we have learned it. Now, mashallah, we are doing our own work. Now, we are also a master carpenter on the machine and we are making our own things. The people were making the things. What will you do with this work? I was looking at the people in the outside. I had my family support, so I joined the carpentry. इस कारपेंट्री की वजह से मैं अपने लिए और अपने घर वालों के लिए सपोर्ट करने के लायक हो गई हूँ। Do you think all women should be able to this to do this kind of job or any other kind of job all across Pakistan? उनके लिए ये मौके होना चाहिए, ये मर्द का काम है, ये औरत का काम है नहीं कहना चाहिए। हम भी मर्द से कम नहीं कि मर्दों का काम करते हैं। We make this chair. And you made this chair? Yes. A rocking chair? Yes. This looks very complicated. 15 days me ye banta hai. And it's all made by hand by you guys. How much would a chair like this cost? 70,000. 70,000 rupees, that's about $700. Yes. Okay, for a handmade chair, that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> I think more people should deal. come to Pakistan to get <laughs> their wooden furniture. I think you guys are doing such an amazing job here with everything that you create. And, and not just that, you're also breaking all these stereotypes and it's really incredible. And I hope that more people around the world get to know about your work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Traveling around does definitely make you hungry. So I've just spotted a little shack just over there, uh, here in Karimabad. So I hope they have some nice food. Let's go and check it out. Assalamu alaikum. Hi. Hello. How are you? Can I can I get one chapshiro, okay. please? Here we've got the famous Hunza Chapshuro, which kind of looks like a flat meat pie of some sort. And here is some organic yogurt, fresh from the cow, with chilies and onions. And it looks incredible. I am so excited about this. Let's try this. A sort of 1,300 kilometers Karakoram Highway has risen to these legendary proportions. To me, it's almost unthinkable that someone built a road, carved it into some of the most treacherous terrain in the world, and some of the highest mountains. Honestly, seems like someone's mad vision that's come to life and absolutely epic. But we've just reached a place that for many marked the end of their journey here. 
We're at the Chinese cemetery where many of the Chinese workers who helped construct the Karakoram Highway are currently buried. And we're just about to meet a man who's been taking care of their graves for a good few decades. This road started in 1960. This was made in 1970. When it was made, there were 210 people who were killed. This was made in the chain. This was made in the chain. This was made in my hands. Why did you start working here? These people are dead for us. This is for our Pakistan. For the happiness and for the happiness. They have given them to us. That's why I have worked on my own. Do you see relatives from China come here and visit some of these graves? Yes, they come to the village, the Chinese come here, and they come here and pray for them. If someone comes here, they don't cry so much. This is someone who is 40 years old, or who is dead in the evening, or who is dead in the evening. They don't know how to do it. Where did the graves come from? Where did the graves come from? Where did the graves come from? Where did This cover is this. Wow, he looks so young and handsome. His two daughters are also. His mother is 50 years old. It must mean so much to her that you tend to his grave. This is our Pakistan's importance. That's why their importance is our knowledge. Our knowledge is more than us. My journey along the Karakoram Highway continues. I'm making my way to a magical place that was born out of a devastating tragedy. Atabad Lake is the latest addition to the local landscape, as it did not exist just a few years ago. It was actually formed after a major landslide back in 2010, in which a whole mountain face literally dropped on the Hunza River and blocked it completely. The river turned into a lake, swallowing whole villages as well as a big section of the Karakoram Highway. The one upside of this tragedy was that Atabad Lake was formed and became a huge tourist attraction. I'm meeting Saddam, a young local who captains a boat here in Atabad Lake. He will be taking me around this pristine blue water. There was this village, this whole village on top of a mountain. In the middle of the village, there was this big crack about four in the morning. It fell down and blocked the whole, this river. The rock fell down from the mountain. Uh, huge rock. The whole village came down, kind of. This massive landslide killed 20 people and buried 600 homes. So how many people used to live in the village? 4,000, 4,500. Is that why you see trees down there just sticking yeah, out of you the can, water? You, know, you can see the small pieces of the trees and the houses and the remainings of the village. Along with the village, the original Karakoram Highway also disappeared underwater, completely cutting off Pakistan's only land connection with China. Wooden boats charged $40 a trip. They were the only way to cross the lake to maintain trade and communication between Pakistan and China. It remained closed for about five to six years. We were using these boats for transportation back then. It was a very rough time. The Karakoram Highway was, high, was closed for five, six for years. Six years, yeah. So between, you know, the transport between Pakistan and China, how, how was that affected? It was all closed because there is only one road from Pakistan-China border to Islamabad. It was all blocked due to this big blockage. Both countries built a series of bridges and tunnels which cut right through the mountain, running parallel to Atabad Lake. This allowed them to re-establish a land connection between Pakistan and China at a cost of a quarter of a billion dollars. Oh, 
born out of a tragedy, Atabad Lake now shimmers like a jewel against the barren mountains of the Karakoram. It's become a popular tourist destination, bringing life back into the local community. Next up, we're continuing our epic journey along the Karakoram Highway. Ah, you can't even imagine. Oh my god, it's swaying. Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> As I make my final journey to the highest border crossing in the world. But that's it. That's the Chinese border right there. 